Hey, travelers. Just stopping by to let you know that this episode that you are about to listen to is one of our older ones, and we were going through some growing pains at this time. But if you would like to start from where we consider our newest era of quality, I would go ahead and jump to episode 54, The American Bigfoot. Either way, enjoy, travelers. Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole, where we are so far down, we're having adventures in Wonderland. Today, we are doing part two. The meanings behind <laughs> music, electric boogaloo. Um, last week, if you guys remember, we covered uh, Rage Against the Machine and Flowbots. And we kind of broke that down and we got to explore um, the concept of the double entendre in music that allows you to interpret things in multiple ways while saying one thing at a time. And then we also got to dive into the concept of applying video to music to really help convey the message. And at the end of the day, we really hope you took something away from that. At the end of that episode, we also asked you a question, uh, and we're hoping at the end of this episode to kind of discuss that a little bit and provoke some some thoughts. And not necessarily bad thoughts, so we don't want you to rise up against your government. I mean, unless you really want to, that's up to you. Don't tell them we said to do it, because we didn't. Facts. But, yeah, right? That is not our idea. Do, do not do anything that's going to land us in jail, please. In fact, if you're going to, if, if you're, at the end of the day, you're going to go, Infinite Rabbit Hole told me to, just don't do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't not. care. I don't care if that's buying a lollipop. Why are you at the store buying a lollipop? Infinite Rabbit? No. No. Go home. Don't buy the lollipop. <laughs> um, what we are, what we are trying to say is that we're hoping to inspire some critical thinking and for you to really take a look at, I don't know where you're listening to this episode, but here in the United States, we have, a political system that's relying on two parties heavily when there are multiple parties out there for things to be looking at. And this really is a way for you to kind of explore the idea of not an us versus them, but it's a us as a united front. And in a way for you guys to really come to some critical conclusions about the world that surrounds you and people as a whole and what happens when you give people power that you shouldn't give people power to. That was very poorly put. What happens when you give people power who shouldn't have it in the first place? And that's really what a lot of these musicians are out here trying to talk to us about. Uh, we explored uh, Jeremy and Andrew. Uh, this week, it's going to be Jake and I covering uh, individual songs. We're going to be getting into um, some other ways of listening to music and really hearing the message. And we're really hoping that you guys enjoy this for what it is and take away from it what you can. But before we get into that, we really need to get down and scratch the surface. Absolutely. So if you guys would like to follow us on any of our social medias, you can follow us at facebook.com forward slash infinite rabbit hole. If you want to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, our handles are infinite RH pod. And if you guys have anything that you would like us to talk about, please message us on any of those platforms. You can email us at infiniterabbithole at gmail.com. Why would you want to email us? Well, you can just let us know how we're doing. You want to set up and come on to our show and, you know, tell us about a spooky story that you have or or, or just content. I mean, you know, one thing that I, I don't think that the listeners of Infinite Rabbit Hole really understand is that if you want to come on and just guest as a normal person, right, and you just want to talk about a topic, Come on. I mean, we love talking about this kind of stuff. So just re- reach out to us. I mean, we d- we don't know who all of you are. So, you know, we can't reach you. So you're going to have to reach us. Let us know. Um, and if you have a story to tell, we want to make sure it gets told either by you or by us. And that's all I have. Uh, Andrew will take it from here and tell you about our Patreon. Thank you, Jeremy, for that uh, kind introduction. Um, so since the uh, launch of this podcast in september of 2020 infinite rabbit hole has been trying to attract listeners with a weekly show of curiosities right um whether it is uh this episode of being sounds um aliens cryptids bigfoot uh to bigfoot or not to bigfoot project blue beam with the uh, conspiracy theories or simpsons time travel um plus many more right 
Uh, we want to keep this show up and running and make the best show we can, but we do need your help uh, supporting us uh, through the Patreon. Greatly allows us to uh, grow and bring you more content as we continue to grow. Uh, things like uh, stuff we want to do in the future, merch, uh, t-shirts, something like that. Um, uh, that will only be possible if you uh, do uh, go ahead and uh, support us through the Patreon, right? Uh, and supporting through the Patreon, you do get bonus uh, things as well. We do have different tiers, so uh, you do get uh, additional content like uh, the bottom of the hole. So definitely check out uh, the Patreon, that infinite rabbit hole uh, for it and see what entices you and help us uh, support the show. Sound like you were struggling to read your own handwriting. Uh, <laughs> I was actually choking on nuts. <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> I, I had uh, eaten peanuts before I uh, ran back upstairs. Ah, sure, peanut. sure. Peanuts. It's bulky, but I consider it carry on. Uh, <laughs> oh, peanuts. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, hey, everybody. Jake here. So just like last episode where we played our very first nasty gram voicemail, you can leave us a voicemail at anchor.fm forward slash infinite rabbit hole. We'd love to hear what you think about the show, if you have any suggestions. And what's more is that continuing forward, if you leave us a voicemail, we will play it on our next available episode. We love to hear from you. We love to read comments on YouTube. So please hit us up there. We post our uh our show on youtube as well with a little uh graphic thing it's it's really interesting uh where you can hear us pretty much on any platform nowadays so wherever you can find us leave us a message leave us a uh, a voicemail leave us something uh some sort of a comment and we will uh respond or we'll take into account we'll uh listen to what you guys have to say we we really really like that positive feedback and even if it's negative feedback we'll play it on the thing anyway so Thanks for listening to us, and let's get into the show. And ratings and reviews. And ratings and reviews. Yeah. Did we say that yet? Yeah, I think you did, right? Yeah, just okay. now. And, yeah. and, ra- and ratings and reviews. Yeah. On iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and uh, what's that on? Uh, Podchaser. And yes. Ra- we need to grow. Help us grow. Is CJ still allowed to hand out uh, free insults to people who leave us nasty grams? I don't care, man. Whatever. I mean, the thing is, is that we have CJ as a host, so we need to accommodate CJ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which means if you're mean to us, I'm going to be mean to you for free. You don't have to subscribe to Patreon for that. But if you want a bonus insult, you can subscribe, subscribe to Patreon. <laughs> give we you ask people one. to like roast us on our infinite or our, uh, anchor.fm forward slash infinite rabbit hole. Leave a voice on there and roast us. Tell us what we're doing wrong and be real mean about it. (laughs) Go ahead, because CJ loves talking shit. (laughs) Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Seriously. Anybody anybody listening to this, go to anchor.fm forward slash infinite rabbit hole. Click on leave a message or message or whatever it is and give us a voicemail. Tell us how terrible we're doing and specifically say something mean to CJ. Yo, come for my whole life. Go ahead. Tell him he has a, a face for radio. It's a good thing he does this because he couldn't do anything else. <laughs> I will tell you this, guys, right now. I was the escalations analyst for a large ISP for about four years. You've got a task ahead of yourself if you want to make me cry. I don't know what that means. It means people called me on the phone and screamed absurdities at me all the time. <clears throat> nice. What up? A- what a life to live. <laughs> Why do you think I don't do it anymore? <laughs> and if for some reason you guys want to leave us a positive comment on those messages too, feel free. We like those too. <laughs> and CJ will not say bad things about you. Jeremy and I are active duty military. Do your worst. <laughs> <laughs> if you're nice to us, I will say something to boost your self-esteem. <laughs> yeah, if you subscribe nice, to Patreon, you're not catching that one. Before whether if it's nice or mean, <laughs> CJ is going to rip in you. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, guys man. smell like flowers. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I won't All do that. Right. I'll give I'll give him a hug. Virtual hugs. All right. Anyway, 
re- real quick before we get into the episode, I just want to reiterate the the little disclo- uh, disclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer from the first episode is that uh, Infinite Rabbit Hole is politically neutral. We do not take sides uh, on on the air. Um, just like every human being, we have our own. Uh, beliefs and everything but we keep that out of the infinite rabbit hole uh some of these uh songs as you heard from the last episode can be politically based um but we are strictly listening and and reporting on a neutral um platform and we are just bringing you observations that is it uh so please do not take anything any comments or any songs that we have chosen as a political stance because that is false that's it. Right. And just to add to that, we also don't encourage any any sort of actions from any of our listeners. And yeah, that's it. Enjoy. Like we said last week, we covered uh, Handlebars by the Flowbots and Sleep in the Fire. Sleep in the Fire by Rage Against the Machine. In-depth, complicated music, uh, employment of the video aspect, like we mentioned before. Absolutely insane. This week... We are going to be covering sort of along the same genre of music, uh, in a way. Honestly, the the genre of punk rock and and even hard rock to a point is low hanging fruit for this kind of thing. But don't don't think that doesn't extend out to other places. You know, we had things like Run DMC talking about stuff like this back in the day too. So uh, genres like rap and everything cover this as well. Um. Uh, I'm actually going to go and uh, deep dive into the song that I chose uh, because Jake elected to go last today. Mm. Is Yep. See? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's going to be that coup de gras. But um, I don't speak Spanish. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my soundboard ready for that one. Um, <laughs> uh, so Yee. actually... <laughs> oh shit like um so uh today i'm actually going to be covering a song by a band that when they were popular when i was a kid i hated them not because i knew what their music was but because everybody else liked it and i couldn't be that guy oh. because oh man yeah i was an edge lord right mm. um not like the incels we associate edge lords with today but i i was one of those kids for like if I knew 10 people were doing it, I wasn't having it. You know, mm. you set up um, a summer cottage on the edge and then you decided I, to live there eight months out of the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. I was one of those guys. Uh, the result was I know what the insides of my high school toilets taste like. So oh, gross. Yeah, it was pretty gross. Or good. No, it was bad. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't in there voluntarily. You know, oh, football players okay. are bigger than I am. So, uh, it's just like, you uh, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like anyway, toilet tasting. Ooh, yeah. You know, uh, back in high school, I was 325 pounds at one point, and we had these really skinny lockers. And I mean, skinny, they were eight and a half inches wide, like when you opened them. Basically, you could put your coat in there, and that was about it. And they really tried to put me in one of those once. How big were these football players? Jeez. Well, they didn't succeed. Uh, and it was kind of like, I was not happy about the situation at the time. Uh, but looking back on it, it was a moment of comic genius on my part, because the entire time they're trying to pack me into this locker, I was screaming, Master Volume! Master Volume! Because I didn't know what else to say. And huh. uh, eventually they left me alone. But I was pretty bruised up from it. I don't yeah, know what that man. means. Master Volume. So... You can oh, only pack oh, oh, mass, so mass the volume. Got it. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, you can only pack so much mass inside the volume of an object, and my <laughs> mass was way too big for that volume. Like, um, but anyway, I uh, say it's true. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I'm also a huge nerd, and I say stuff like that. But uh, anyway, the the band that I'm talking about, I actually started listening to more regularly, maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, and that band is My Chemical Romance. And there were a whole slew of our listeners that just cringed, but hear me out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I realized that they were that very poppy emo phase. Including one uh, of your hosts. Yeah, I was just like, ugh. Yeah, right? 
Um, but I mean, nowadays, like going back and listening to some of their music, their instrumentals are actually pretty impressive. And um, like, like I said in the first episode, you know, we listen to music, but now oftentimes we don't actually hear it. And this song that I'm about to cover was actually my inspiration for uh, suggesting this this episode topic. And the song is Teenagers that they've done. And overall, uh, the song is a commentary on how the general political system, our government, and even a lot of adults uh, view teenagers. And now that we're older, uh, we... We, we it wasn't that long ago that we were teenagers but now that we're older you know i imagine there's a lot of shit that we did where we look back and we're like we were fucking dumb uh-huh. right um <laughs> you know like why the hell would we do that you know and then like you look at teenagers now you know like you're sitting on your porch and you see some teenagers coming down your street and sometimes your first thought is what kind of no good are you up to right and that's just a stigma teenagers have and it's it's, it's tough to get past that sort of thing. And this song really kind of gets into that and really encourages um, the idea that, you know, that, that kids should be allowed to be kids, but we really are trying to make an effort to control them and manipulate their minds. Right. So a, a young mind is a multiple mind and we're really working on the manipulation factor in here. And the first verse of that song really gets into it, where they say they're going to clean up your looks with all the lies in the books to make a citizen out of you because they sleep with a gun and keep an eye on you, son, so they can watch all the things that you do. And that's not a joke uh, today in today's line of, of things. Uh, when this song came out, I don't really remember if smartphones were a thing, but we carry around tracking devices on us every single day. They can turn those cameras on and look at you whenever they want. Uh, if you go online and, and look up pictures of Mark Zuckerberg, there's pictures of him with tape over the, the webcam on his computer, right? Um, and it, it, this is a really prominent thing that's going on with our society. They monitor us constantly. Big Brother was a big thing. Uh, even Even back in the 70s, they were worried about the government listening to your phone calls. Were they doing that back then? Yeah, absolutely they were. Were they doing it on the scale they're doing it now? No, they didn't have the capabilities. Now all you have to do to give the government permission to listen to your phone calls is buy a phone, right? As soon as that bad boy connects to the internet, and we'll link this to a second song, um, and it, it, it's a song by Dual Core uh, called Hackers. And in that song, it's a rap song, and they say, connect it to the internet and someone's going to own it, right? Hmm. And... W- Nowadays, we don't even know how to live without the internet. If the internet went down on us now, our lives would be in chaos, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but this kind, of, this 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 uh, verse really kind of starts touching on that thing. Like they watch you, and they are going to make make a citizen out of you. Meaning they're going to mold you the way they want. At least that's the goal, right? Uh, we move into the next verse, uh, and I'm not going to do the entire thing here because it's not really necessary but it starts off with because the drugs never work Uh, and then they go on to say they can keep you clean and that they'll tear your aspirations to shreds (laughs) basically what that's saying here is that they are well aware that the drugs they give you do not work right and that's not to say like if you're if you're going through a a mental illness or you're having something like that and then you have a medication that helps you get through that, that that that's not what this means um, because those, uh, for a lot of people, those medications are necessary. What I'm talking about is things like the opioid crisis, right? We have these issues where doctors are prescribing painkillers for people and over prescribing them and then getting them hooked. And then, you know, they stop prescribing them. And then these people end up looking for things like heroin. It's a huge issue. And it's not, it's prevalent today. But this is not a new concept. This is something that started when we were teenagers, maybe even before that. But I remember uh, the real thing, like when we when you went into the D.A.R.E. program in high school and they started talking about drugs, they really started talking about painkiller pills and why you should avoid them, things like that. And, you know, uh, then they go into a chorus and the chorus is very significant. When they move into this chorus, there's uh, an aspect of music uh, that we're going to talk about here, uh, inflection and intonation. They they intentionally say the very first two words 
very quietly so that you'll miss them if you're not really listening for it. Because the idea is they're masking this stuff in this song uh, to make it sound like it's their opinion and then that they're not speaking on behalf of these other people. Uh, but the first two words of the chorus is they said, and they, when you listen to this song, they say it very fast and very quietly as compared to the rest of the chorus. And it's, they said, all teenagers scare the living shit out of me. Right. Uh, they could care less as long as someone will bleed. So darken your clothes or strike a violent pose. Maybe they'll leave you alone, but not me. And that uh, it, it, it's significant. Like I said, they they intentionally say they said very quietly so that you maybe you'll miss it if you're if you're just listening in your car while you're driving or something. And they're saying that these kids who darken your clothes, they strike the violent pose. Um, maybe they'll leave you alone, but not me is a misleading line. It they said it in a way to make it sound like, you know, maybe maybe all the maybe the the authorities will leave you alone, but I'm not going to ignore you. They're not. Uh, the the hidden message here is maybe your classmates who you're trying to intimidate will leave you alone, but they're speaking on behalf of the government when they say, "But not me. I'm still watching you. I'm still here. I'm still going to mold that ideal citizen out of you by the time you're grown." Mm. right and uh, i mean the the song really goes on and kind of how uh jake brought up um the song pumped up kicks right uh, is that what the song's called right yeah yeah, yeah. We, so they get into another lyric um uh in another verse they say uh uh shoot i lost my place here okay so that's the, in another verse they say but if you're troubled and hurt, what you got under your shirt will make them pay for the things that they did. Right. And that, that entire verse is about bullying and kids who are lashing mm -hmm. out against that kind of thing. They're making a direct commentary uh, on the concept of, of, of school shootings and things like that. And then they go into the next chorus. It's the same chorus, but it's very deliberate. So what they're saying is, it, within this verse that because uh, they these kids are causing these school shootings and everything um, because of the bullying and, and uh, one of the lines is the awful names that they stick. So these things that are happening, these kids that are causing them to do the school shootings, like the government's going to take care of that. Teenagers are scary, so we're going to fix that. We're going to make them into citizens. They'll leave you alone, but I won't. I'm always here. Like... And it's, it's really crazy, like the message they're trying to convey within this song, that no matter what you do, no matter how much you try to uh, rage against the machine or... <laughs> he um, said it! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no matter how much you try to do these things or try to stand out or try to be different uh, or try to make change, that they are still there. Their goal is still to make that ideal citizen out of you. And they're confident that they're able to do that. And, you know, listeners uh, that are listening to the show right now and myself included in Jake and Jeremy, I mean, you guys are in the military and Andrew, what did we grow up to do? We became responsible citizens. We're not out there starting a revolution or anything like that. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, we mm -hmm. think about that and it's like, we became that citizen image in a way our minds don't necessarily work the way they want them to. Like we still see the bull crap they're doing, but at the end of the day, are any of us really going to go out there and, and try to stop them? Probably not. Maybe Andrew, but probably not. Um, I got bills. <laughs> right. Like, I, got a, I got a kid. And you know what? If you really think about it at the end of the day, a lot of us have that same line of thinking where, you know, yeah, it sucks, but it's better than jail. Yeah. And, they they know that like they know we have that line of thinking like we can make you miserable but there is always that we can make you way more miserable than you already are which is why you're going to act the way we want you to act and most of us are like mm, that's fair we got it mm -hmm. um again not saying that anybody should really go out like, if you are going to go out and try to make changes politically campaign like run for office yourself do something right. vote them Let's, out of office do it the right, right way 
Right. Get out there and do what you got to do. Um, try to make change, try to make petition things. I know it all sounds useless, but if enough people are doing it, it might actually make some change. Um, and uh, the, the song finishes uh, with uh, two repetitions uh, of that chorus. What they do say, another significant line before they begin the, fi- the, the second to final chorus, they say all together now. And that makes it sound like it's a rallying cry. But no, it's it's like you're be you're becoming symbiotic with the system at that point. You've become hmm. one of them. They don't they no longer say at that like they don't they don't repeat the they said. That line is gone. They don't say it again. It's all together now. Teenagers scare the living shit out of me. You've become the adult. You've become that ideal citizen. They won. They successfully molded you. And in a way, they're not wrong. We, on some level, have become that ideal model of citizen where we get up and we go to work, we come home and we pay our bills, we feed our families and we play with our kids and we raise them so that they can repeat the process later. And that's what the entire song is is coming down to, is they are afraid of the young generation, so they have to force them uh, into becoming the ideal adult so that they can continue the process. And at the end of the song, they win. And they successfully pull it off. Gross. I'm a cranky old man. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. But anyway, we ha- I have an empty lot next to my house. And I live near a middle school. And a lot, like, Uh-oh. the high schoolers don't give me any kind of problems, right? But these middle schoolers are little badasses. And anytime they wanted to, you know, have the little after-school scuffle, they didn't meet at the flagpole. They met in the lot next to my house. Um... And then one of them broke one of my windows. Like he put a hole in the window and then he busted up the siding on my house, like throwing rocks or something at another kid. And I was the guy, I had a walking stick next to the front door for like hiking and treasure hunting. And I literally had that walking stick in my hand. I leaned off the porch and I was like, you kids get out of here. And like shook the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and, they off my away, lawn! Right? and they ran away. They were like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, I'm that old guy now. Yep. Yep. That's you. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> And I was like, this isn't funny anymore. <laughs> All because My Chemical Romance told you. No, it was because they busted my window. That's what did that for me. <laughs> oh, but... yeah, okay. Okay, old man. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But you know what I mean. It totally yeah, happened the other day. Yeah. Do you, do you guys have anything to add on to that? The, the song? Another song that I was going to do, right? And it wasn't politically charged at all. Um, and it, it, I just don't think there was enough oomph behind it. And then, uh, you know, I found out that you were doing teenagers, uh, by my, my chemical romance, I was going to do the black parade. Um, mm. that was another song because a lot of people don't understand that, the, that, that song is about death. It's about a kid laying in the, in the hospital on his deathbed about to die. And his father is trying to, you know, uh, how uplifting! Yeah, exit. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's another reason why I kind of skipped out on it too. But it's just like it's so awesome. You know, my my chem does this right. Um, they they put these hidden meanings into songs, and if you don't like take the time to either listen or even like even if you listen to a song like the Black Parade, I mean, you can get hints and tips. Now that I know that it's about death, like joining the Black Parade is dying. Um, but now that I know that when I, li- when I read the lyrics and stuff, the the lyrics mean so much more. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where I don't necessarily have much to say about teenagers in general. You can, you did a really good job about it, but basically what I want to say is like, Hey, take a listen to listen to your, your favorite songs and then just do a quick Google search on what's the true meaning behind this song. Just pick a song. And I, you know, a lot of there's a lot of uh, songs out there with hidden hidden meanings that you didn't know. It, it's really crazy, like when you look at a band like My Chemical Romance, and back in the day, you really were like, oh, oh, <laughs> cheesy, God. And then, like, you listen to the lyrics now, or like you read them, and you're like, They're fucking brilliant. Right. Like, this is this is some of the most advanced wordplay I've ever seen in my life, and right. they're so subtle, and it's right there, and you can miss it so easily. Um, it's just, it's just it's amazing, and that I mean that's one of the reasons I actually like the band nowadays is like I realize their actual genius like in their writing. It's like whoa, it does make you appreciate it more. 
I wasn't ever against my chem. I was actually a pretty big MCR fan uh, in my junior and senior year. I that was that was like my uh, my music style right there. Yeah, I definitely went to a buddy's house and he put the album on, and I was a SpongeBob meme that day. I was like, I I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. All right. Anybody else have anything to add to uh, CJ's deep dive into my chemical romances teenagers? Uh, no, I I agree. I agree with what you said. I've I've become the old man too. Trust me. Kids in my climbing in my little sapling out outside. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kids but, suck, bro. They spray painted a dick on my garage once too. <laughs> Maybe I'll send that to you guys. You can upload it to the Infinite Rabbit Hole Instagram. But they spray painted a dick on my garage. And it's not even a good one either. It's really bad. The artist was terrible. Uh, Would you give him a a four out of five? No, more like a 1.5 out of 10. Like garbage. But you could still make it out that it was what it was supposed to be. So couldn't have been that bad. That's why they get a 1.5 instead of a zero. What is this snake doing on my garage? Oh, no, it's a chode. (laughs) It's so bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's definitely a dick. All right, Jake, take us away, man. Hey everybody, bear with us while we take this quick break. All right, have you guys all listened to the song? I have. I actually yeah. listened to on repeat. So I've I've heard that song before, the one okay. that you're about to do. Um, but I, it was I, no way, shape, or form that I ever actually listened to the music. Uh, so I listened to it on repeat about ten to fifteen times today. Jeez, Jake okay. sang it to me about half an hour ago. Yeah, I I was here for a little bit of it. Okay, so you guys went pretty deep into yours, but I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to get lost in the infinite rabbit hole right now. I love it. So believe it or not, and this will be a shock to the viewers or the listeners, whatever, but I was not always a Christian guy. And as a matter of fact, when before I was a Christian, I was ran my life almost completely into the ground. Basically... I've been sober. I don't drink and I've been sober for October. October will be about four years for me or will be four years. Damn. Has it um, been four years already? Yeah, dude. It's been Jeez. a minute. You know, congratulations, dude. I grew up in a home with a really nasty, mean alcoholic. And I appreciate when people walk away from that life. Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't just step away. I had to almost kill myself, but you know, it, it, and it took, it took a while, but yeah, I appreciate that. So, The song that I picked is called Pet by A Perfect Circle, and it's off of the album 13th Step. And if you know anything about alcohol or drug addiction, there's the 12 steps, right, of Alcoholics Anonymous, 12 steps of various recovery programs that are all based off of the the 12 steps of AA. And the entire album is very, uh, it, it really plays into the different aspects of an addict's life like the the entirety of the album it has a whole bunch of different songs that just all are like different key points of it and pet is very much so part of that idea it when i was getting sober is when i found this uh this album and i just attached myself to pet because when you first look read into it or you first you know listen to the song from the mindset of an addicted person pet sounds like the addiction is maynard james keenan singing to the the uh the addict and you know i'm gonna read out some of these these verses and and tell you about what they meant to me at that time and it was uh lay your head down child i won't let the boogeyman come and that's like the the withdrawals, right? Just keep using, keep doing this, keep drinking. I won't let the withdrawals come if you keep doing this. Pay no mind to the rabble. Head down, go to sleep to the rhythm of the war drums. For me, at that time frame, that was reminiscent of the screaming insanity inside my own head. Just drink myself to obli- oblivion and drown it all out the issues the problems the uh everything that was going wrong in my life at the time the relationships that i was running into the ground 
as long as I stayed addicted, as long as I stayed involved in my alcoholic lifestyle, none of that mattered because the only thing that mattered to me was the alcohol itself. And let's see, there's a, I'll be the one to protect you from your enemies and all your demons. I'll be the one to protect you from your will to survive and a voice of reason. This is just the alcohol was talking to me. So when I was, when I had heard this song and I must have listened to it hundreds of times and it wasn't so much of a reminiscing on being an alcoholic or actively using and drinking, but it was more so of reminding me of how bad it was and how much I didn't want to go back to that. Um, because it's true, you know, alcohol was my only friend. Alcohol was the one that I turned to when, you know, times were good and times were bad and I was happy or sad or, you know, whatever the occasion was. It's a Tuesday. Let's get hammered. And so it became my protector. It became the thing that made me feel safe. It became the thing that your God is supposed to be for you. Alcohol was my God for a very long time. And it, the, the song gets, it's deep and disturbing and it gets more aggressive as it goes till at the back end of it is saying that the boogeymen are coming, the boogeymen are coming, uh, keep your head down, go to sleep to the rhythm of the war drums. And it's just more and more possessive of the user as the song continues. It starts off very, I'm here for you. I'm your only friend, sort of. And then it gets more towards, you have no one else except for me, and I'm not going to let you go. And so at that phase in my life, it was... It was just, I felt it. I felt that control over my life that my addiction had. And, but here I am four years later where I'm not all wrapped up in everything anymore. I mean, I don't attend AA meetings. I'm sober. I just don't, me and my wife, we don't drink, right? And she ended up, she quit drinking the same time I did. And we just decided we're going to live in a household that where we don't drink. Oh, we're not going to continue those behaviors into uh, our relationship when we have kids and, you know, subjecting them to that. So now that I'm out of it, this song has an entirely different meaning to me. And, you know, it's not, it wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be false to say that the, brilliant you know uh lyrical genius of uh maynard james keenan for a tool and for a perfect circle and i never got into pussifer i never really you know listened to any of their songs but that it is not false to say that a lot of his songs have double and triple and quadruple meanings and it can mean an entirely different thing to whomever the the listener is what they're going through. He really plays into the emotion. You know, it, it's just amazing. Uh, you know, the, the music portion of it, just the, the, the guitar, the, uh, the drums, it's just incredible in itself, but his lyrical genius just flows through all of that stuff. And I want to break down this, these lyrics on this very seemingly, you know, we're talking about drug addiction and we're talking about alcohol addiction sort of album that he's on uh, or that it's on. And let's think about this in a governmental sense. So we have lay your head down child. I won't let the boogeyman come. Think of it in the way of what the media does. You know, the interesting thing about this album is it came out in 2003 right before we went full scale into our war on terror. And what was, you know, whether you're one political side or the other, or you're in the middle, I believe that all of it has its own agenda. That whether you're Republican or Democrat, independent, whatever, it all has its own agenda. It's all, we're the righteous ones, we're the good ones, and they're not. 
So if you look at it from the perspective of this is the media or this is the government talking to the average citizen, I'll be the one to protect you from your enemies and the voice of reason uh, or your, your will to survive and your voice of reason. I'll be the one to protect you from your enemies and your choices, son. They're one and the same. I must isolate you, isolate you and save you from yourself. Swing to the rhythm of the new world order, counting bodies like sheep to the rhythm of the war drums. The boogeymen are coming. The boogeymen are coming. Keep your head down. Go to sleep to the rhythm rhythm of the war drums. It sounds like he's trying to convey to us amongst all this stuff that you could you could take from this song and say this is about addiction and this is about whatever this that and the other you could also play it in and say this is the media blinding people pay don't pay attention to that rabble don't pay attention to the war drums pay attention to me just go to sleep just close your eyes i'm we're going to be here to protect you from all this all this other stuff don't don't listen to any of that other stuff you know pay no mind to the rabble you know, when I hear rabble, it reminds me of that, of that uh, South Park episode where all the uh, the townspeople were all against some speaker up on stage, and all you can hear is rabble, 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 rabble as they're speaking, and it's all the naysayers. Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to what we're trying to feed you, what we're trying to convey to you, and if we're thinking about that in the time frame of post nine eleven right cranking into the war on terror with all the conspiracies wrapped around there you know it's pretty intense that for the most part there were conspiracy theories there were all these sorts of things but there was a lot of people most people i would say that were all for it it was this group of people it was a terrorist attack we're going to go over there and we're going to you know hand their butts to them what's the real reason behind it and then you had all the conspiracy theorists and all that stuff about 9-11 itself and about the war on terror what are we really doing in the middle east and it makes sense and like uh i think it's it's like handlebars where i said it aged like a fine wine i would say that this is more so the way that the government and media operates, what, whatever side of the political spectrum you're on, now more than ever. Because everyone is throwing blame. Everyone is saying, don't pay attention to them. We're the ones that are telling you the truth. Pay no mind to that rabble over there. We're going to be the ones that are going to protect you from that. Just close your, Just close your eyes and go to sleep. Lay down and go to sleep to the rhythm of the war drums. It's intense. And if you listen to that song, I encourage you guys to listen to it and listen to it all the way through. And it's paired very nicely with Lullaby. This is track 11 on that album. Lullaby is track 12. And it kind of drifts into it where it's just Maynard James Keenan sing, saying or whispering, go back to sleep. And then there's a, a hard bass line and then a little girl that's just kind of doing this little melody over the music. And it's really creepy and it's really dark and disturbing. And it's it pairs very nicely because like tool like a perfect circle like uh i don't know one of my co-hosts said the the songs are meant to be played one after the other and it's a story it's a progression and this song you know amongst all the other songs on that album that deal with addiction that deal with the struggles of of being attached to something like that or have something having dominion over you it could very well be the government having dominion over you and blocking your eyes and closing you out to what's really going on. What do you guys think? I just want to point out one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that I I heard the song before when I was younger, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as I, I, I just didn't know what it was called. But as soon as I started listening to it, because you said that you were doing this song, it immediately clicked in my head and I even was able to sing along a little bit. That's how much I actually have heard it before. Um, but I find it so strange. Now I can see exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about the addictions and you're talking about the news and the, the current climate and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But I heard something completely different 
And I think it's so awesome and interesting that so, so many people can listen to the same song and hear completely different stuff. I heard because, you know, uh, I'm not trying to get my feels or anything, but I suffer from depression and PTSD. Yeah. Um, I heard in this song somebody being told it's okay that's suffering from something similar that what I'm going through. Um, and it's just, it's, it's very, very cool how you can apply this particular song to many different things. And Mm -hmm. it, it really is in the eye of the beholder of what this song could actually mean. Um, but like you had said, this, this song, you know, specifically when you're talking about the the political standpoint of it right now, it really did age really well. And I, I have a feeling that this one, as well as the other songs that we talked about, uh, are all going to age very well as mm-hmm. as we as we get older and as the songs get older, I think they're gonna age even better. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I don't know. I my favorite verse in this is uh Pay no mind to what other voices say. They don't care about you like I do. And then he whispers like I do. Safe from pain and truth and choice and other poison devils. See, they don't give an F about you like I do. And it says, stay with me. And it's just like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, alcoholism. Yep. You know, the one political spectrum or the other. Yep. <laughs> you know, and yeah. yeah um you know, depression and all that sort of stuff. It could certainly, I could see that, that it has a a positive note to it and a, a darker note at at the same time. Hmm. Actually, I have uh, two things to add. Um, So I pulled up the lyrics while you were talking, so I could kind of like follow along Mm -hmm. with you. And uh, I got to say, like when you were when you were talking about you know giving up your alcoholism and everything, I actually sat here and cried a little bit silently. I know you guys didn't uh, hear that. Well, man, I'll admit it. I was crying a little bit because everything you were saying uh, is everything I wish my father had done for me. Uh, and for those of you out there who are listening to this right now, uh, being a father is the most important thing in my life. Um, and making those those decisions for for your kids is. Uh, that that's the the number one thing out there and everything Jake's saying, like he he's planning on having a family. So he's making, he's doing these steps to, to, to be that person. And I, that touches me on a level that it's, it's really hard to explain. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, uh, the other part is while I'm sitting here reading, reading these lyrics, um, and I'm actually kind of surprised you didn't bring it up, uh, Jake, given, given your background with Christianity, but these lyrics are very spooky and it looks almost like the devil himself is talking to you. Well, the devil's in the addiction, right? Well, yeah, of course. It's <laughs> just like just like yeah. the genius, the genius behind the writing. Like if the devil was going to write a song, it's almost like it's almost like he wrote these lyrics. Like he's t- talking like I, I can save you. I can go back to sleep, stay safe and ignorant with me. Like mm-hmm. that's it's crazy. Uh, I, I did a lot of time. uh as a Christian growing up uh, myself and like that, that persona that that gets projected to you of, of what Satan Lucifer fails above is really putting out there. Like it almost feels like, like if he was going to speak that these would be the words that came out of his mouth. It's, it's kind of horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a deep song. It's a really deep yeah. song. It was a good one to end with. And I, I love how that you guys each had your own experience in it because it, it basically points out the fact that art is basically the eyes of the beholder, right? right? So each of you had your own experience that you could take to this song. And I feel like our, uh, anyone else out there listening to this song could have their own experience to put into this song. Right. So it is something that, uh, uh, something well crafted, such a like a good crafted song. Uh, in this, you can see yourself in that spot, right? You can mm-hmm. see like things that you've gone through or experienced, or things that like other people have gone through and experienced. And it doesn't take away from your personal experience; it just adds to the song, right? Yeah, for sure. 
Well, uh, does anybody else have anything to add here? Uh, no. All right, now that we're now that we're all in our fuels, <laughs> <laughs> deep. I went Thanks, deep, Jake. Dick. I struck the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah. You know what? Speaking of the bottom, uh, CJ, do you would you like to kind of give a little hint as to what we're going to be talking about for Patreon uh, subscribers only? I I will as soon as we discuss the question that I promised we would discuss at the end of this episode. That's true. Let's do why, that. Why do you guys think that these artists who this is their living, this is how they're making their money, and they're in the public view? Like, why do you think they would be willing to pass these messages on? Because, like, if it's anybody who knows about this stuff, it's the people who are on the in crowd, right? Mm-hmm. So they're in the in crowd. Why would they tell us about this? You know, why would they? Like, there's got to be risk, you know especially with um, certain politicians out there that have a knack for offing people um, being out there like that. Like why, why would they tell us that? Why do you, why do you guys think? I think that when you talk about a musical artist, a lot of times you're talking about somebody who actually did make it from the bottom. A lot of the talent actually comes from somebody who, went through a lot of stuff and had to put more into it than let's say somebody who was given a silver spoon. Right. Um, so, you know, maybe, and I'm not saying that all of the songs that we talked about, there were definitely some of the songs that we talked about that kind of seem like they're kind of like hey, saying, Hey, under, under the sheets saying, Hey, uh, this is what's going on. Keep your heads up. This is what's going on. Look for it. Right. Uh, but Maybe this is them trying to uh, kind of give back to the the, per- the people who helped them get to the top, right? To to their the pinnacle of their careers. So a lot of these people started off as us, and through hard hard work and experience through life, they made it to where they are. And now they're saying, "Hey, we we've heard some some really stupid shit uh, <laughs> here." Uh, here's a little bit. You just have to decipher it because I can't say it straight out. Yeah. That, that's what I take from it, you know. And they rely on their fans that who they know are going to be able to decipher it. Yeah. Who know their personality, who know who they are, who know the, those underlying messages. They build that fan base and then start releasing these tidbits of information. I mean, I can't, I can't believe that, you know, we, we constantly see it in the news celebrities getting trapped up in weird situations and stuff or some of them that are just like breaking away from it that they're like yeah i got invited to like a weird cultic ritual and i said no (laughs) you know and you know no one very few people really pay attention to what celebrities say they care about what they dress like and what cars they're driving and what their houses look like it's we rely on singers by what they say you know, music artists by what they write and how they perform and stuff. And so I think it's even more of a platform for speaking into the minds and the hearts of the fans. If they say something like, this is what the elite is really like. This is what the government's really like. This is what you don't see. You see the cameras and the microphones and all this stuff. This is what they're like on the outs or the inside behind closed doors. You know, I've been able to see it because of my wealth, and now I'm giving it to you guys, so now you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, just kind of follow what you kind of said there about no one cares about what celebrities. Uh, Dave Chappelle said on one of his episodes, this is one of Andrew's favorite examples, too. You know, let's see what Ja Rule thinks. Yeah. He's all, <laughs> yeah, what Ja Rule right. thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I mean, yeah, definitely. I Honestly, like, when I, when I look at this uh, question, I... I I honestly don't, I don't know, because when we look at things like, did Epstein really kill himself? Uh, what happened to those three presidents recently, the mm-hmm. of the countries that refused the vaccine? What happened to them? Did they really die of a heart attack? Like, you know, and we have these, um, you know, other people, like there's there's a conspiracy theory behind Tupac uh, Shakur and uh, the Notorious B.I.G. Mm-hmm. that, you know, that they were whacked, you know, so it's not unheard of for the government to assassinate these, these celebrity figures and it, or at least not unheard of to theorize about it anyways. Like Chris Cornell. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was trying to expose the uh, the pedophile rings and stuff, and somehow he overdoses after years of sobriety. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's crazy. That's that's kind of like why I wanted to put that uh, question out there. And uh, Andrew, like, do you have any thoughts on the situation? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, um, that's funny you mentioned because I was going to say that too. The Dave Chappelle uh, thing, basically, uh, right around when. Um, 9-11 happened what they were ja like Rule say? yeah 9-11 happened and they're just like what does Ja Rule say or what does Ja Rule think about 9-11 and I'm just like uh why the hell would I care what uh this person would like give me a government official or give me like a four-star general or mm -hmm. someone like that's not yeah. a current rapper that now everyone forgot about like the, the other thing to think about too in, in regards to that is like if we look at things like Instagram or TikTok or whatever, right? You know, when they have these uh pseudo celebrities on there, they're not calling them celebrities, they're not calling them famous people, they're calling them influencers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very deliberate title, mm -hmm. if you ask me. Very specific too. I mean, let, let, let's say, you know, they're they're there to influence, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So then we have these these celebrities and influencers that break the mold and try to tell us what's really going on. That 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 feels like high risk, right? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. CJ, go ahead and uh, give us a a peek into the bottom of the rabbit hole, man. Yeah, absolutely. For for you Patreon subscribers out there that are about to uh, tune in and listen in to the bonus episode, the bottom of the hole. Um. You know, uh, in, in the first part of this episode, we explored metaphor and simile, and we explored the concept of combining video. And then in this episode, we explored intonation and and tone and delivery. And then we ended with Jake's just triple and quadruple entendre and these brilliant lyrics that really should shake you. Um, and... We are going to discuss a work that combines all of those things into one, and it's a movie we probably all know and love. We're going to discuss Alice in Wonderland. Boom. Taking it from audio to visual. Boom. 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 All right. Well, you heard it here, guys. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about at the bottom of the hole. So, again, you know the drill. If you are not a patron of the Infinite Rabbit Hole, this is where you get off. But if you want access to the bottom of the hole and hear us talk about the Alice in Wonderland movie, please go on to our patron, Patreon, sorry, patreon.com forward slash infinite rabbit hole and subscribe to any of our tiers. We have a two, five and ten dollar tier. Any of those tiers will get you access to the bottom of the rabbit hole and all of our previous bottom of the rabbit hole episodes. Um, it's a great way for you to kind of come with us as we extend the conversation into the topic that we're talking about and for you to enjoy some bonus content for the money that you donated to us to help grow the podcast, to help grow the show that you love, to help us uh, provide more and more and more and more. Uh, every single, every dime that goes into the Patreon will go towards the show. Uh, we Nobody here is rich. Uh, we, uh, we have put a lot of time. I'd like to be. I would like to be too, um, but we have put a lot of time, money, and effort into this podcast, and uh, we would love it if we didn't have to keep dumping funds into it over and over and over again. Um, not saying that we won't, just be nice if we if we didn't have to. Uh, but until next time, this has been another episode of Infinite Rabbit Hole. We'll see you at the next one. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Infinite Rabbit Hole. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can do so at infiniterabbithole at gmail.com. Follow us at facebook.com forward slash infinite rabbit hole. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash infinite rh. Follow us on Instagram at infinite underscore rabbit underscore hole. We're always looking for someone that has a story to share. So if you feel like you've experienced a strange encounter with something that you can't explain, reach out to us. Let us know. Come on, have a good time, tell your story. And if for some reason you don't want to show up on a podcast, send us a letter in our email in a format that we can read to the fans, and we'll be more than happy to read it to everybody. Well, that's all for this episode. We'll see you next time down the infinite rabbit hole.